I'm Mark Matsumoto and welcome to my Tokyo kitchen. Today I want to show you my secrets to make the best Japanese pork gyoza that's crispy on the outside and ultra juicy in the center, so stick around. Japanese gyoza evolved from a Chinese dumpling called jiaoza, but like ramen and karaage, they've evolved into their own thing here in Japan. The main difference is that the filling is mostly vegetables, and the wrappers are super thin, which makes them more delicate and crispy. I've been making gyoza with my mom since I was a kid, and over the past 30 years, I've picked up a few tricks that make these Japanese pot stickers drip with porky goodness. Sound good? Let's take a look at our ingredients. For the filling, I've got a 550 gram head of cabbage, 350 grams of ground pork, 30 grams of fresh ginger, and 130 grams of nira or garlic chives. To season the filling, I'm using 3 tablespoons of oyster sauce, 1 and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, 1 and a half tablespoons of toasted sesame oil, and a quarter teaspoon of white pepper that I'm going to freshly grind in a pepper mill. To wrap the gyoza, I'm using 80 gyoza skins that are about 9 centimeters in diameter. The first thing I'm going to do is bring 6 cups of water to a boil, and then I'm going to add 2 teaspoons of table salt. To prep the cabbage, trim off any stem that's sticking out of the bottom, and then I'm going to cut the head in half. Get the cabbage into the boiling water with the cut side down. If it doesn't fit, you can quarter the head as well. Cover this with a lid and boil the cabbage until it's nice and tender. This brings out the sweetness of the cabbage while making it super juicy. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes, so let's check on our cabbage. You'll know it's done when you can easily poke the thickest part of the stem with a skewer or a fork. This is perfect, so let's get it out of the water and onto a tray. We want the cabbage to retain its juices, so you don't need to use a strainer here. Now we just need to let this cool enough to handle. While we wait for that, let's chop up our garlic chives. Just trim the ends off and mince it up. Garlic chives are like a cross between scallions and garlic, and they're going to add a ton of flavor to our pork gyoza. But if you can't find them, you can substitute an equal amount of green onions along with a large clove of grated garlic. Let's get these into a large bowl, and then I'm going to grate in our fresh ginger. I'm using a daikon grater to do this because it doesn't get clogged up like a box grater, and you can pick one of these up at my kitchen tool shop using the link in the description. Okay, our cabbage should be cool enough to handle now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it onto our cutting board and mince it up. By the way, you may have noticed I didn't squeeze the cabbage. This was intentional, and it's my second secret to making juicy gyoza. You see, cabbage is loaded with amino acids that create the taste of umami in your mouth. And when you boil the cabbage in salt water, the juices create a flavorful vegetable broth. By not squeezing the cabbage, you end up with little reservoirs of flavor that turn into soup when you bite into the gyoza. Once you have the cabbage roughly chopped, go back over it with your knife like this. The goal here is to get it minced up into pieces that are no bigger than 3 millimeters or about an eighth of an inch. Okay, this is looking perfect, so let's get this into our bowl with our other ingredients. Make sure you dump in all of those cabbage juices on the cutting board as well. Then I'm going to add the ground pork, oyster sauce, soy sauce, and toasted sesame oil. Let's hit this with some freshly ground white pepper from my pepper cannon. And I'm gonna put on a glove because the next part gets a little messy. Now I'm gonna use my hand to knead the mixture together. The goal here is not only to distribute the ingredients, but you want to beat the meat and vegetables together until it's sticky enough that the whole thing comes together into a cohesive mass. Okay, this is looking good, so let's transfer this into a smaller bowl. This is my next trick for making the best pork gyoza. 
You want to let the filling rest overnight to allow the flavors to mingle and mature. If you're in a rush, you can skip this step, but it's not going to taste the same. Cover this up, and then I'm going to pop it into the fridge overnight. Okay, it's been about 8 hours, so I'm going to get the gyoza filling out of the fridge. Then I'm going to prepare a small plate and a damp paper towel, and I'm going to use it to wrap a package of gyoza skins to keep them from getting dried out. Next, I'm going to prepare a small bowl of cold water to wet our fingers. Finally, I'm going to spread a sheet of parchment paper onto a tray to keep the gyoza from sticking. Now we're ready to wrap. The first thing you want to do is place a gyoza wrapper on the palm of your non-dominant hand. Then you want to scoop about a tablespoon of filling into the center of the wrapper. Now you want to dip your finger into the water and use it to wet the entire rim with the gyoza skin. Then you're going to fold one side of the wrapper up and over the filling and secure it with your non-dominant hand while you use the thumb and forefinger of your dominant hand to fold about five pleats into the wrapper as you seal it shut. Be sure to press out any air pockets so the dumplings don't explode when you cook them. Then you want to set your gyoza on a tray and keep them covered with a damp paper towel. Okay, let's see that from a few other angles so you get it down. Put a wrapper in your non-dominant hand. Add a spoonful of filling to the wrapper, and you want to keep in mind that less filling makes it easier to wrap, so start small and work your way up. Wet the rim. and fold the wrapper in half using your non-dominant hand to secure the dumpling while you fold pleats into the top half of the wrapper with your dominant hand. These pleats aren't just to make the gyoza look nice, and you'll see why when we cook them. By the way, I asked my wife to wrap these today so I can shoot these tasty close-ups. Plus, she's way better at this than I am. Okay, that's enough gyoza for now, so let's fry these up! I've got a 10 inch nonstick frying pan over medium heat and I'm going to add a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Then I'm going to arrange the gyoza around the pan in a circular pattern. Do you see how the pot stickers stand up by themselves? It's because the pleats we folded in them have given the dumplings a subtle curve which holds them up. Once you've completed your ring of gyoza, you should be able to adjust them a bit to make room for two more pot stickers in the center. Next, I've got a lid on standby and I'm going to dump a quarter cup of water into the center of the pan and quickly cover it with the lid. The hot pan will vaporize the water and instantly cook the wrapper which keeps the tops of the dumplings nice and chewy. Now I'm going to set a timer for 3 minutes and let the gyoza steam. This should be just enough for most of the water to evaporate, so adjust your heat up or down if you notice the water is evaporating too slowly or too quickly. While we wait for our gyoza to steam, I want to take a moment to thank all of you for supporting my channel by watching and liking my videos. If you've learned something new from this recipe and you want to do something more, head over to MarksRecipes.com where you can subscribe to my secret stash of original recipes. These are simple dishes that I cook for my family here in Tokyo, and your membership helps to support this channel. All right, the timer's almost up, so let's have a look at our gyoza. Oh, wow, that smells amazing. Now I'm just gonna let these fry until they're golden brown on the bottom. This should take another minute or so. You can lift one of the pot stickers up to have a look, and this is looking perfect. All right, let's get these plated up. Because the gyoza are so juicy, I like to serve these with the crispy side up by flipping them onto a plate. Just be careful not to splash yourself with hot oil here, and if you're not confident in your flipping abilities, you can plate them individually. All right, I don't think I need to tell you just how ridiculously good this smells, so let's just dig in. Itadakimasu. Oh man, it's so crispy on the bottom. Look at that. All right, let's give it a dip of sauce. 
<laughs> no, that's just ridiculous. The moment you bite into it, it's super crisp on the outside. And you get this explosion of juices that come from the inside that fill your mouth with umami. There's the melted fat from the pork that gives it a nice richness. But then you've got this tangy sauce to go with it to cut through that and keep it from getting too cloying. And that cabbage has done its job. Not only are these gyoza loaded with umami with a nice mild sweetness, the moment you bite into it, it just gushes out these beautiful juices. It's almost like a soup dumpling, but in gyoza form. All right, let's have another one here. A little more sauce. <laughs> I don't know if the mic's picking up on that juiciness. And the wrappers are crispy on the bottom, but on top they create this chewy noodle that gives it this great contrast of textures. All right, I'm gonna crack open a beer and enjoy the rest of these. But these are the best pork gyoza ever. So I hope you'll give them a try. Oh. They're so good. Well, I'm going to go finish off the rest of these and maybe hit the gym afterwards. But check out this video for three different gyoza sauces to pair with these. And I'll catch you in the next one.